Happy Fabulous Friday! So I don't, let me see if you can see my ears. I'm not sure if, they, if they're showing up. I'm, I'm trying a new setup. Hi! Happy Fabulous Friday! Okay, I'm on, I'm live. And I turned my, I have my Halloween, um, let's go, there we go. Oh good, you can see me. Okay. So I changed the setup here a little bit, and so um, you'll see. I oh, I look so tired. I didn't sleep very well. Um, let me turn this light down a little bit more. There we go. And so I um, wanted to say hi. Good, good afternoon. So I have my Halloween lights up because we, we're going to start our thirteen projects of Halloween. So. I did a little sort of Halloween one with the Harry Potter pig, the, the um, piggy potter that I did um, before. And so now I'm going to keep going and we're going to have at least, we're going to have 13 projects of just Halloween. Well, I'll try, I'll do some other projects in there too, but my focus is going to be 13 Hall Halloween projects. And remember, even though it's a little early, it, in order to order all the stuff that you need to make your projects, you're going to want to make them now in August, in September. You're not going to wait until the week before Halloween to order things and make things. It's like almost too late just because shipping and all that happens. So remember, you can always order from fabulousstamper.com and click on shop. And I don't know if you can tell, but like these are a Haunted Mansion ears. They're from fluffyarts.com. They have an Instagram page also these are like pretty old like they're black roses and so um i've had they have different designs now of different kinds but they're the same people that made my um nightmare before christmas ears so i wanted to give them a little shout out just because i do love their quality of work they do a really good job but these are my haunted mansion ones so uh anyone that's been to disney world will, or disneyland will know what i'm talking about so I uh, want to get started on our little project. I have it ready. I thought I was going to have a completed one to show you, and I didn't. Remember last time we did the Harry Potter featuring this little pig, Piggy Potter. And then we also did a little fall card using the little um, pig. And I just thought it was a fun idea to do a little Piggy Potter card. Um, but now we'll just move on and we'll we'll go from there okay so let's just get started don't forget fabulousstamper.com and you can use the host code I'm going to show you in just one minute okay. okay so this is our host code for this um, this is our host code for this what's the word for this month um, and we're actually going to be using two stamp sets. Now, when I looked at this stamp set, many times people will pigeonhole a stamp set to where it only can be used just for fall or for Christmas. But I actually felt it could be used for Halloween. Technically, there's a little holly leaf on the porcupine. Let me move that a little bit. There we go. So the glare is off a little. For there's the porcupine or the hedgehog has a little um, holly leaf on its bowl, but uh, don't limit the possibilities that can happen with these types of um, stamp sets. I just found it to be whimsical and fun, and I fell in love with this little pig with this little Starbucks mug, Starbucks cup. I love hot chocolate. I don't drink coffee, but I do love hot chocolate. I can't even tell you. I love it. So. Um, I thought that was the perfect little stamp for me. And I'll probably make something with this later, but just not at this time. Okay, kitty, get down, get down, baby. Good boy, good boy. Um, um, so, let's go, and then I'm also using this stamp set here, the Clever Cats, which is all in the new stamp catalog, which is in the new catalog. Um, that is the other one I'm using. And my paper keeps moving on me. Um, okay, so let me just tape my paper down. Um, 
I'm going to be using this, mainly this one here, but I'm going to be, you, actually I'm using a little bit of a mix, so you, you have a fun little mix for, um, to upgrade this to a Halloween stamp. And actually this is not only a Halloween style um, stamp set either with the cats, you know, hey crazy cat, my, um, oh the twitching hour, yeah. Um, I, uh, really, I've been this cute for all nine lives. You know, you could easily make a birthday card, I felt like, you know, because you're talking about lives. You know, the cat in the box, it doesn't have to only be for um, Halloween, even though it's kind of styled that way. There are a lot, there's a lot of potential for this particular cat as well, which I'll show you that another time. We'll focus just on the hedgehog this time. And I think I'm going to need this stamp set. I forgot to get it out. I have a... There it is. I have several, I made several samples and I was almost done with my cards and then the cat decided to jump up on my, I had made the cards last night, just hadn't finished the coloring because I started to get tired. And so um, I didn't finish the cards, totally forgot. I thought my cards were already finished. They were not. So here we are. Um, so as like I did with the pig, I made sample hedgehogs and I just stamped on the same, you know, so just like I did with the Harry, the Piggy Potter. I made sample hedgehogs and tried to figure out how I wanted to color them and design them before I put them on my nice label. These were supposed to be for the samples. Um, what I figured out when I was stamping them is that you can see through the black stamp when I stamp on top of the little hedgehog you can see his little hair coming through you might not be able to see it it might be very light um, if you were up close you could see it it's very subtle but um, but you can see it so I figure realized I had to color um, I realized that I had to color the hat again with a marker and just do a few different things just to make it look clean um, and yeah, so I did some practice. Uh, we're gonna do this one here and we're gonna do this one here. It's gonna change up just a little bit. This has little pumpkins in it and this has little um, apples, but I chose green apples. So we'll just go ahead and get started. I'll go ahead and take one. Um... Actually, I'll stamp. I'll st show you how I stamped it first. Cause I was like, how should I do this? Cause I have two samples already made. I might as well use them. So how I stamped them and then I'll let them dry. We'll do like the, the, uh, what is it? The Betty Crocker's kitchen kind of deal where, you know, cause you really should let your ink dry just a little bit before you start to color. So, all right, let me get that all inked up. And the other thing, oh, and this comes from this particular label comes is this label here and it comes from the stitched so sweetly dies and this um, is a fantastic label to use I tried using these other labels but they just didn't look like I wanted them to I really liked that this this label keeps the hedgehog and the hat kind of tight and close together um, so okay so I let my uh, stamp sit for a minute so actually you can breathe on it to get the ink, but I just realized it's missing a little ink in the center. Like it didn't uh, pick up the right ink in the center. There we go. I think it was just a little, maybe a little wet or something. Okay, and so I'm gonna move. Remember, you have a lot of leeway on the edge of your rubber stamps because there's a little layer. There, that layer is your guide. So I need to stamp two little hedgehogs. I need to re-ink my black. Okay. So I stamped my two little hedgehogs, set them aside, and then I took the hat that was from the Clever, Clever Cats stamp set. I also took the spider and I took this It's Halloween. So this hat actually came from the Clever Cats stamp set. Um, and I'm going to... Um, add the hat to my hedgehog to make it a Halloween style stamp. Now there was a little trick when I was stamping her head. I guess it could be his head. 
Okay, there we go, nice and inked. The key is you wanna make sure you have a pad or a catalog underneath when you have a really broad, flat stamp in order to get a clean image. When I stamp down just on the table, sometimes you'll get like a blotchiness. Um, and so, oh, there's a hair on here. I better clean this off. Um, there we go. There we go, got it off. Um, so there's like a slight blotchiness um, that can happen when you are stamping without a pad underneath it. It'll give you a more dense color when you stamp. So I realized when I played with it, I had to play with it on that other extra sheet of paper. The key was to not go too far down because otherwise the buckle will be in the hair and you kind of have to cover the ear. Oh, I can see that it already, it made a little blotch from where my finger was. But that's okay, we're gonna color it. So then we're gonna set that aside. Do the second one. Set that aside for one minute. Let it dry. And because you kind of need the hat to brim to go over their, her face a little bit more. And then press your little hat down, okay? The hair is popping out just a tiny bit from the um, from the hat in this one, but you can cover that up with the marker here in a minute. So you let this dry for a second. Oh, my stuff is rolling away. Okay, so let me put my black ink, cover it before I put all my stuff on top of it. Okay, so I take my um, black marker, this black stamp and write marker, and I'm gonna go ahead and color the hat because you can actually see the stamp. The black is not, this black stamp is not a perfect, um, it's not a perfect mask over the previous black stamp. You can, I don't know if you can see, but you can slightly see the hair underneath and the other stamp. So in order to make sure that it's covered up, I'm just gonna trace the edges first with the black marker and I'm gonna color it in with the black, basic black stamp and write marker. And this will cover up all the hair so that you don't see it. I saw someone else, there's a hat in the Frightfully Cute, I think it's called. Uh, I think it's, yeah, I think it's like Frightfully Cute. It has a witch and some potions. Um, I saw a, um, a hat die cut in that set, but I don't own it. So I was like, how can I put a hat on this without, you know, a witch hat with a current stamp set? Where, what can I do? How can I figure this out? And so I wanted to make it Halloween-y. And I'm gonna cover up those little hairs with just a little bit of basic black. No one will ever know, except for me. And then just color it in. So it's kind of a pain to, to color it you know, I guess if I were doing a ton of these, I might not, um, I might not necessarily want this design if I made a dozens and dozens of these, but I love the brush tip on these Stampin' Right markers. I love the brush tip on any of our markers, but I like our Stampin' Right markers. They're, they're very good quality and I don't feel like they streak too much. Um, there we go. So then you've covered up the lines and the hair of your, um, you've covered up the lines and the hair of your, um, of the porcupine or hedgehog, I mean. No, baby. Okay. All right. So I will do that for both of the ones that I stamped. But what I realized is that <laughs> I'll, I'll, I already have this one already done. Oh, and the other thing I needed to stamp on here is the... I wanted to cover up this holly leaf. I just wanted to cover up the tiny holly leaf. So what I did is I was, I realized I had this little spider that was from the Clever Cat stamp set. And I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna stamp the spider on top of that little holly leaf. And you just ink up your black spider and just gently just, you know, I played with it a few times. I didn't want to cover up the eyes. So I just, 
practiced a few times. Oh, I covered up his eye just a little bit. His eye um, is on the holly leaf, wound up on the holly leaf just a touch. I mean, probably because I'm on camera, it did it too. So, um, there you go, that one, I didn't do it. There we go. And so his eye's not, not, doesn't have a line through it as much as that other one did. And so you just practice with it to try and get the little black spider on there. And I just like that it covered up, um, it covered up that little bit of um, holly leaf. Because to me it looked definitely like a holly leaf. So I wanted to cover it up. So here's one that I've already done. And I colored the granny apple green um, on the, um, on the apples. And so, and this is bronze, the bronze blender, okay? I colored the bronze blender for the color of his little paws and his face. I've missed a little spot here. So his, his face is bronze. Um, and by the way, when you're stamping, you're gonna want to wait. So you're gonna wanna wait a minute. So you want this to dry as much as you can before you actually uh, use the blends on it because it'll definitely pull on that black marker and that black ink. So you want it to dry just for a minute. <coughs> and then I took the light um, cinnamon cider and see here's my guide. I wrote a little guide even when I was practicing. I wrote a little guide about how I colored it. <coughs> Excuse me. That one's dark and this one's light. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to color my little, my little hedgehog. And I'm going to show you how to texture it just a little bit. I'm using the light first and then I'm going to add the dark in a minute and it's you're going to see how the dark actually shows a little texture um, if you do it right. Can't wait for Halloween. I love Halloween. Okay, and then I'm gonna take the dark cinnamon cider blend, and I'm just gonna draw on some of these lines that are already here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And if you put a little bit of them around the face and around the legs, it actually gives a little bit more texture to the edging, so it's not a perfectly straight line. And it adds just a touch of difference in color. It's not a ton, but when you're up close to it, you'll see. <coughs> okay, so I'll hold it up and hopefully it'll show. There's a very di slight texture where you can see the difference in the, um, the hair. And so you can see there's the flat or the little bit of brown streaks on the top of it. And that adds a little bit of texture. That's the good thing about blends is that blends do add, um, can add something simple like that. Okay, and then I'm going to color the, just use my normal pumpkin pie Stampin' Right marker. And I'm going to color in her apron. My little witchy girl. Halloween is my favorite holiday. I love the, f I don't like the gross parts about Halloween. I just like the fun parts. There we go. I 
I love the brush tip of the Stampin' Right markers. It takes away some of that streaking when you color. Um, the blends don't streak at all, um, but the um, the Stampin' Right markers, they can streak. Um, like just traditional markers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color my bowl, my gray. I kind of wanted it to be like a little cauldron. And so I colored it gray. This is dark gray granite. And I'm gonna take my bronze. No, I wanted to take my dark cinnamon cider. That's what I did. I took my dark cinnamon cider and I just did a little bit of, of um, of uh, mixing on the edge there and I actually did it too hot dark I think maybe I had used the light before and the bronze will like just kind of blend it out a little there we go it didn't look like that on my other one I think I was supposed to do the the cinnamon cider first before the gray granite maybe um, so I've got my little bowl made some gray on top and see how it works now. There we go, it lightened it up when I did it again. Because I wanted it just to have a little bit of texture on the edge of the bowl, but not like too many dark lines. Um, oh, and then I used the yellow for the little buckle on the top. I could have used any color, but I just went ahead and just used a traditional yellow. Daffodil Delight. And see, because this piece is all dry, you don't have any kind of uh, bleeding from the black. So all I did was I took this one and made a simple, simple card. I, this is three inches. I took the great paper that we have, the um, cute Halloween paper. I took the orange and black striped and I cut it in half. So this is three inches by six, uh, by three inches by five inches. So I cut it in half, three, um, three inches by five inches. And then this is three and a quarter by five and a quarter. And I decided to go ahead and use pumpkin pie pumpkin pie paper and I'm just gonna go ahead and glue this on oh I needed to add my little um, sentiment at the bottom I I want to glue my sentiment down I want it to be here but my only worry is if I move it too much I'm worried I can get it I don't know I do want to glue it down okay, I'm gonna glue this down okay uh, I was like I told you I was trying to make these before make some samples beforehand and I just had forgotten to color my stuff so I hadn't finished and this is I'm still using a four and a quarter by five and a half I want it centered I guess it's not totally centered but I want the sentiment at the bottom here and so let me go ahead and get my it's Halloween, and I want to put it in the corner down there. Let's make sure I have it right way. Okay, oops, let me practice because that looks a little blotchy. It is. Okay. There we go, good. I didn't need the pad underneath it anymore, I'm done. But, Okay, so there's my It's Halloween, and all I'm going to do is pop this on dimensionals. I didn't even really plan on putting anything else on here. I thought about adding some extra ribbon or things like that, but honestly, it was so cute as is. I just felt like, no, nah, you're good. You don't need any other things. Sometimes quit while you're ahead, you know, because um, sometimes it's better just to stop and you don't need to, you don't need more. You don't need to gild the lily. And let me get out another chunk of dimensions here. And 
And so this doesn't have anything fancy. Doesn't even, I don't even, I didn't even think, I thought maybe I could pull out some embellishments. You know, I could pull out the black, um, they're not pearls, but they're black dots. Um, let's make sure that's centered. Yep, that looks centered. There you go. Stamps, ink and, ink and paper. Just simple little witch card for Halloween. So that's a more traditional one. Um, just a more traditional um, hedgehog card. Super cute. And then, of course, you know, I always like to have a little non-traditional something in my stuff. So I went ahead and decided to use more of that paper. I wanted to use this paper here. I wanted to use the Highland Heather and the striped paper. The back of the striped paper had this and the back of the orange paper had these dots. So half of the stack of paper, the cute Halloween paper is black and white and the other half has color. And even though it's not traditional to necessarily use this pink with these, um, uh, with these orange stripes or whatever, I still think it's fun and I think it's worth to, you know, to try out something new. I love the idea of having a non-traditional color for Halloween. I, I, I thought about putting pink as the background, but it was like a little too much. I think it needs touches. I don't know about too much of it. So I tried to keep it basic. Okay. And so, and again, this is three inches by five inches. And then let me make sure I can fit my sentiment at the bottom. It's three inches by five inches. And then um, I'm gonna color this to match this card. Oh, it's crooked. Oops. It moved on me just as I was placing it. Good, I grabbed it just in time. Actually, I think I'll pull it off and put some more glue. It moved on me just as I was setting it down. Good thing I caught it. Oops, except I don't know if I can fit my, it's Halloween down here. I can't, it's just a little tight. That was my worry when I was placing the other one, was that if I, and this It's Halloween comes from the Crazy Cat stamp set. It doesn't come from the, um, so we're using the two sets. So the crazy cat had the It's Halloween and it had the cute spider and it had the hat, which was perfect. And then I used this label from the stitched So Sweetly Dies, perfect label is that one. And then I used the um, hedgehog from here. So let's go ahead and color this to match our, um, let's color this to match our pink and purple theme. So I'm gonna go ahead and color all of these uh, orange. I'm gonna make these into pumpkins. I figured out that I could make them into pumpkins, which I liked. No, kitty, get down. Dude, this is not a sleeping place, baby. No, 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 baby. He's like, I need you to snuggle me. He's got a little eye infection, so he's like a little extra needy. Poor thing. And even though I stamped my spider, I know there was a little apple there in the corner. It's kind of hard to tell the difference. Okay, all right, so colored my orange, and I wanted to use Highland Heather for the skirt, uh, for the apron. I didn't have a Highland Heart, a Heather um, marker, normal marker, otherwise I would use that. So I'm using the blends, but it can be tricky with the blends. Oh, no baby, no, no, get down, get down. Bubba, get down, get down, Bubba, get down. Um, 
the blends are not as fine. They bleed. They can bleed. So you got to be real gentle in a in a fine space, like that. So I just gave it one go around because they can because the alcohol has them bleed a little bit. And the cool thing with this is that there's never any streaking with the alcohol. Um, because the alcohol just bleeds out. Okay, so then we put a little bit of... Um, oh, I wanted to use the gray on the... the I wonder if I had a gray granite marker. Oh, but I want I had it blend a little bit. Hey, hey, stop fighting. Hey. Hey. There we go. All right. So there's my little bowl. And I'll take my bronze to color his face for her face. I just felt like the face and the hands needed to be a little different color. I mean, in theory, you could make them all the same. I hate to do too much coloring on my on the air because it feels a little bit like a waste of time. So sorry, it's taking a little bit of time. Okay, so then we do the light cinnamon cider for the body, and then we add the highlights with the dark. I'm trying to think of what I should do. Maybe I'll do yellow again for the for the little hat. now the peacemakers are there trying to get them to stop fighting. I have one cat who's a peacemaker. He doesn't want to fight with anyone. The kitten and the orange. No, Baba. Dude. At least he didn't walk under the camera. At least we're almost done. So, it's not dinner time. I don't know why they're so cranky. Um... So there we go. So, oh, the hat. I want to color that. You know what? I'll color the hat with the uh, green this time instead of the yellow. I could have used old olive even because old olive is in the paper. Oh, I, that's right. I have the green to make the pumpkins. And so I decided to do little pumpkins and I made little stems. I practice all this on that little sheet. That's I didn't make any of this up, you know, now cuz you kind of you don't want to waste your um Okay, and then I actually did some like little So they're like little baby pumpkins coming off of the... Oh, and the other thing I wanted 
to do on this one is I wanted to add like they were poison apples so I had added some little gray lines coming up Whoops. I think I used a marker um, and not a blend for it, but that's okay. It still looks okay. Um, so there's my one, here's my other. Where'd my dimensionals go? And so remember, this is the cute Halloween paper that I used. So this isn't a traditional, a lot of people, like even myself, I used the, um, I used all the, um, oops, I used all the, um, what's the word? I used some of the really obvious cartoons, like the, the ghost and all that. I used that paper the other day, and also the jack-o'-lantern paper and the bat paper. That paper just is screaming my name, the little bat paper, so cute, and, um, this cat paper, I didn't make something on air, but I did show you a sample of what I made. I'll make some more things with this paper later. You know, I've got 13 projects of Halloween, remember? So I'll have a lot of Halloween projects to show you, even from stamp sets that are not Halloween. So, so let me make sure. centered so cute so there we go so those are our two Halloween cards using a mix of the crazy cat and the um, mix of the crazy cat and the uh, joyful life that's it crazy cat and joyful life or clever cats clever cats and uh, joyful life and so I just use these pieces and that sentiment from clever, um, from the clever cats, and then I use that cute little hedgehog from the, um, from the joyful life, and still made it a Halloween set. So yes, seasons reading, so that tends to be a Christmas-related idea, but it doesn't have to be. And fall, obviously, because the scarves, but you know. You could easily do whatever you want. So don't forget, you can always pick up anything you need at fabulousstamper.com. And please use this host code um, when you're picking things up. This is the uh, cute Halloween paper. This is the Stitch So Sweetly die. And so um, I also have a new stamp and cut, mini stamp and cut that I want to show you guys. Um, I'll show you in another video. I just got it. And so, so fun. I mean, how cute is that little Halloween? I mean, it's so sweet. I just can't, I thought, how can I make this a Halloween set, more of a Halloween set? Well, I mean, made the Harry Potter, the Piggy Potter. So that was a perfect one, was having the Piggy Potter. And then we made this one. So this was designed for Christmas and I've already done two Halloween cards. Well, Harry Potter can be any time of year, but I could easily, think I think of Halloween and Harry Potter as well so perfect I hope you like these cards guys and don't forget if you comment and share um, I'll put you in for the drawing for the cards and send them to you so um, look how cute these little pumpkins turned out I'm gonna zoom in on those a little bit how cute are those pumpkins and I just drew them with the garden green marker that's I just drew some little embellishments off the top and drew the lines with the green. I think I could have used black to draw the lines, but I didn't because that's on camera. Um, and I practice all those. Remember, practice on your scrap sheet. So on here I had used black and then the green. And so I just used my practice sheet. That's how I figured out how to do the hat. That's how I figured out how to do the little, see I had drawn a spider on this one. I tried to figure out drawing a bat. That wasn't gonna work. So instead, the spider wound up being the choice. You know, this is clearly not a bat, but I was attempting. And then I drew a label of what I wanted to color, like a little legend, to remind myself. Because sometimes I'll start a project and start coloring and stamping things and then realize, wait a minute, I'm missing 
I'm missing something, like I did something different, okay? So just so you know. All right, well, have a great day, guys. Thanks for tuning in and being patient with my little kitties. Um, I hope you have a great day. I hope you pick up anything you need at fabulousstamper.com. And um, thanks for always being supportive. And hopefully you'll turn in for the other 12. So this is number one. So we have 12 more Halloween projects to go. So, all right, have a great day, guys. Thanks. Bye.